Isn't it good to come and worship? And uh, special thanks for all those who've shared in worship thus far and to the Madden family for sharing in this scripture reading and prayer. Uh, to Lucy and Ruby for welcoming, welcoming, welcoming us um, so beautifully. It's good to come together and worship, isn't it? It's felt a while since I've been uh, up here. I almost feel like I'm on foreign, foreign soil here. But uh, since camp, we've had so many things taking place, haven't we? And we had our, our youth month. And a, a massive thanks to our youth for stepping up and sharing in worship services and, uh, and leading us um, in that way. It's been, uh, been wonderful. There's been so much happening both in the media and, and also in our, in our world church as well. And uh, there's some, been some challenges that have been there that have, um, yeah, I want to reflect on a little bit this morning with you in terms of what we're coming to share together today. I think sometimes we judge God through the circumstances of life to being highly unattractive in character to being cold, formal, distant, judgmental even. How can there be a good God when there's so much pain and evil around us? And in our scripture reading today, Jesus is about to face that evil and pain And he he just so wants his followers to be braced for what's ahead. To have a true picture of the Father through this time. And so in these final moments before his suffering, he shares with his disciples what you might call his last will and testament. And in John chapter 16... He starts off with these words. I've told you these things so that you won't abandon your faith. Any of us here tempted to abandon our faith? Let's come to the word of God here now and and recognise that what Jesus has for us in, in what we're celebrating together today, what we're taking part together today, is a part of that hanging on and not abandoning not abandoning our faith. For you will be expelled from the synagogues and the time is coming when those who, will, who kill you will think they're doing a holy service to God. But note what John says then. This is because they have never known the Father or me. Wow. Never known the Father or me is what Jesus is saying. And so what is it about the Father that people haven't known? Maybe they've had this picture of this distant um, God who's, who's looking down in judgment on them as well. And maybe they're out to, to take part in that judgment. And so it's a window, it's a window into the Father's heart. The pictures that the gospel paint of Jesus is what is also being painted of the Father. You see me, you see the Father. And so there's a a unity of DNA and purpose between the Father and Jesus that is being painted through the scripture. Yes, there is. They're diverse in their functions, but united in their DNA and their purpose. Hence, I've entitled what I'm sharing today, uh, God's DNA. A DNA that Jesus shares with us of of a, a picture of who the Father is. So we come back to the scripture reading that was shared with us. I've spoken of these matters in figures of speech. What figures of speech has he used? Well, he's just celebrated the, the, the Passover with, the, with his disciples. He's just used these symbols of the bread and the wine, figures of speech, if you like, 
um, symbols of what is about to take place. And he goes on to say, I'm going to, I will tell you plainly all about the Father. What's he going to tell them plainly about? Well, what's about to come, you couldn't get more plain than what Jesus went through for each one of us on that cross. There is the stark reality of the Father's love for us in Jesus. And then you'll ask in my name, and I'm not saying I will ask the Father on your behalf, for the Father himself loves you dearly because you love me and believe that I came from God. Yes, I came from the Father into the world, and now I'll leave the world and return to the Father. And so what Jesus is painting, it's not a Father who's remote from us. And Jesus is trying to placate placate on our behalf in order to be loved by the Father. It's not a view of God the Father where Jesus provides appeasement on our behalf. We Christians wrestle with the meaning of Jesus' horrific death. Some imagined God as a God of retributive justice who took out the punishment for our sins on Jesus. Others see in God the Father a God who ends human violence, absorbing it in the divine love a divine love that is shared love. And so it's not an eternal um, subordination of Jesus to the Father, but it's the truest of equality that is demonstrated in what Jesus came to to share with us on, on Calvary. We'll explore that more another time. Eldon Thompson shares these words in this regard. He says... Why did I need an advocate if God loved me? It's a fair enough question, isn't it? The answer came from John 14 to 17, just where we're at here, where I discovered that the purpose of the mediator, note these words, was to introduce us to a friendly God, not to protect us from a reluctant one. Isn't that beautiful? And so it's it's like a shift in our picture of the Father that we can adopt because of, of, um, of Jesus' life and death on our behalf. Here's another from George Mueller, which follows the same vein, where he says, true prayer is not in overcoming God's reluctance, but it's in overcoming his willingness. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. And so Jesus, through these verses that we've just shared, is not into a triangulation between us and God. He's not in there as an in-between to make God favourable to us. He's there to present a picture of of God the Father where you and I can come directly into his presence knowing that he loves us just as Jesus loves us. God's DNA, if you like, is in and through us. And Jesus came to restore the image of God in us. Who we are as Springwood Church is just that. You and I are growing to be faithful disciples of Jesus. It's a place where we can belong, our home away from home, if you like. And part of that belonging is just what we're going to be doing over lunch with our mystery lunch, sharing together in fellowship and it's, it's, a beautiful, it's a beautiful relationship that we're developing here at Springwood in having that incredible cross-pollination of, of, of fellowship, a place of belonging. It's a, a place where we have an, a, a uniqueness within our diversity 
as Springwood Church. And, um, you know, we, we, I love the generational aspect of us at Springwood, where we have our survivors, we have our, we, our survivor generation, we have our, our boomers, our, our, um, our millennialists, our, um, you know, busters, um, you name it, we have it. And, and, and we're all in together in this wonderful mix of, of, of Springwood Church family. And uh, it's, a, it's a, a beautiful thing that we're, we're nurturing and developing, our uniqueness in our diversity, um, where our generational differences can be celebrated rather than be a source of aggravation to us. And I noticed, noted in my research that uniformity is the unity one finds in a brick or a sheet of paper. It's a unity of sameness. But there's another kind of unity. It's the kind that we celebrate together. It's a unity in diversity, where there's deep integration that takes place. It's like a jigsaw puzzle, where all the various individual parts come together to make up this beautiful uh, picture of a whole. It's like a body with a multiplicity of different parts that combine together in unity together. And I note that difference, not sameness, is the base of creation itself. And your, your ministry team here at Springwood celebrates that same diversity. Um, you know, we, uh, we, we are from different generations even, and I hate to admit it, but, um, you know, I'm a young head on old shoulders and, and, and Annalise was a young, uh, an old head on young shoulders. Um, we, um, you know, we're both male and female as part of team together in ministry. I was drawn to this church as, in, in part because of the team of ministry that we could um, be part of together. Um, you know, we even... We even come down the rostrum in different ways. And um, those of you that were here last week, you, last week, you know, will, yes. Um, <laughs> Annalise shared with us the video clip of that. And um, Latin and I, we just, we just couldn't stop laughing. And she was laughing with us. Um, and, and we had to watch it a couple of times just to take it all in. But we, we found that there's, um, it could be a new form of, of, of blessing on departure. You know, have a, have a happy Sabbath as we go down. But um, that was part of, the, part of our diversity. Another aspect that I really like in, um, in, in our ministry diversity is that we, um, we share pain together. And uh, a, a couple of weeks back, we had to put down our, um, our family dog, Agape, um, a golden retriever that we'd had for 14 years. And it was painful. It was painful. And um, as I'm there at the vet and... Um, and uh, I'm patting Agape, and, uh, and the syringe goes in just to put him to rest. Um, Mladen was there beside me, and, um, you know, the tears were coming down my face, but they were, they were coming down his face as well. Um, in, in I, I tend to find with my pain. And uh, I'm still feeling it a bit. I went for a walk this morning and on my own, and... Uh, I was saying to Lanella, I wish the Garpe was there because I'm, she hasn't learnt to come on the lead yet. Um, and, uh, <laughs> um, I don't think she will. Uh, <laughs> so, so in our diversity, there's a unity where we share each other's pain. We're in relationship together, aren't we? And, and some of us are going through a bit of pain in terms of what's taken place recently in our church. And, and we want to share that pain together and, and, and to grow together, recognise that who we are is so much more than the individual parts. Recently, your, um, your leadership council actually was was true to our commitment of growing faithful disciples of Jesus in, in our diversity. And, and we actually shared 
with the um, with the annual council at GC, our reflections on, on where we felt um, that we were wrongly headed as a as a um, as a world church, and I'm proud of our our Springwood Leadership Council for for stepping up to the mark and doing that. And rightly or wrongly, um, some of the media presented that as coming from Springwood Church. But in a way, they were right. Because your Springwood Leadership Council shares the same DNA as we share as church together. You know, you take any part of a person's body and you get that same DNA, don't you? And that's what we are like as church together. In our diversity, there's a unity through the DNA that we have through Jesus and our Father. And it's a DNA of humility. It's a DNA that Jesus himself gifted to us. And this very DNA is symbolised in a very basic way by what Jesus did in that upper room where through his humility of washing his disciples' feet, he initiated this DNA of the Father's heart of love for his children. It's a God who comes close and personal, relational, not some distant God who reigns and rules from afar who is ready to wipe his hands of and disown anyone who steps out of line. No, he's a God who comes personal down to our level in order to wash our feet and draw us into an embrace of love and acceptance and cherishing. It's a God of true unity that we worship. And this God, who we hold dear to our hearts because of Jesus opening our eyes up to what he's like, this God in Jesus invites us to do the same with each other. And I know in today's world, you know, just it seems a little bit, oh, um, it grates on us a little bit in today's world because it's not something that we do in our society of of washing each other's feet. But Jesus said, I've given you an example that you should do to each other what I've done to you here. And so we take that literally as Seventh-day Adventists and we say, we're going to do that. Even though it's uncomfortable, um, we're going to do that and share that with each other. And we're going to display that same humility that God, through Jesus, shared with us in that upper room. So I'm going to invite you now to go over to those side, um, side chairs, grab a partner with you, and together celebrate having that same DNA with each other. And then we'll come back and we'll, and we'll take part of the emblems that Jesus shared with us. Bless you as you do that. <laughs>